Hello and welcome back to the 14th episode of Greek Speaks. This week we are talking about Dionysus. He is the god of like wine and merriment and madness and pretty much just college frat parties. That's what he's the god of. And theater. Just why not throw that in there? But he's interesting because he, he was a lot higher on my list of favorite gods. I think he was like fourth or fifth or something like that until about month and a half ago where I read the Bok which I recommend you doing. It's very well written. It's very interesting. Um, but he's just a massive, just terrible person in that. And so just by reading that, I just kind of, his, his favorability with me kind of tanked. But he's still a good god. I mean, he's still third from the bottom. I also kind of like the side and was looking at him through rose-colored glasses to a degree because uh, he is a major character in Percy Jackson, which again, I love and nothing is wrong with, and I have a very biased opinion of. So, let's talk about Dionysus. So, like I said, he was the god of drunkenness, wine, merriness, and, and the theater, and madness. Theater and wine are kind of interlinked. We'll get to that in a minute. He is the son of Zeus and Smele. He doesn't ha really have any notable offspring. Um, Zeus and Smele... His mom has a really interesting birth story, or death story, actually. Uh, his, of course, he's the son of Zeus. Hera figures out that Zeus had another affair out of wedlock. Hera dis disguises herself as one of Smele's maids and flies down to Smele and is like, Hey, how do you know this guy is Zeus? People, guys pull that all the time to get into people's pants, you know, whatever. And she's like, and Hera goes, You know what you should do? You should... Ask him to see him in his true divine form. And Smelly goes, oh, that's a great idea. And the next time Zeus comes, uh, Smelly's like, hey, um, so I want proof that you're Zeus. You know, swear upon the river sticks that, you know, whatever I ask of you, you'll do. And Zeus is like, okay, sure. And so Smelly goes, okay, show me your true divine form. Which, uh, <laughs> she doesn't know this, but that if you look at it, it makes you explode. It, like, causes you to burst into flames. And Zeus goes, uh, I will give you anything else. I will give you all of Greece to rule. I will do whatever you want, but I don't want to show you my divine form. And the smell is, oh, I don't need that. I need you. What do you look like? And Zeus just finally is like, okay. And he casts off his mortal gaze and uh, turns into a supernova, pretty much. And Smelly bursts into flames. And <laughs> Zeus uh, plucks baby Dionysus out of the womb as his mother is dying. And sews him up in his thigh and makes it so, um, it makes it so Dionysus doesn't die with his mom. You know, six months later or however long, <laughs> Zeus tears open his thigh, out pops Dionysus. <laughs> so, he, very interesting birth story to say the least. But his attributes are a wreath, kind of likely what we would think of as Christmas. Not necessarily that exactly, but, um, wine cup, a Dorissus? Dorissus. Uh, which is a long stick with a pine cone shoved on the end. Um, his followers carry them. He carries them. Uh, grapes, vines, animal skins, full and dress. He, he's really interesting, and I'll get this into a little bit. Uh, he is probably not from Greece, or is more Eastern influenced than other Greek gods. And so he dresses all like Persian. He also, in the animal skins, he has panthers, leopards, things like that. Uh, he has cult titles, Bacchus, which you probably recognize as his Roman name, Eleutheus, which uh, just means of this one little city near Athens, uh, Lachis, which is a Iacus, which is a ritual cry, that's something his followers would do, Limnius, which means of the marshes, cults of him were outside the cities originally, so probably that's where it originated, just to where his followers met and all that jazz. And then also, uh, Lysisius, which, uh, it means releaser, which probably is about booze, because the entire idea is booze, you know, of your inhibitions, all that jazz, and so you're releasing your true self. Uh, his cults and rituals, there was the Anthesteria, which is, was a three-day festival in Athens that had to do with opening the old, opening a new wine, drinking contest, parades, uh, and eventually a sacred marriage to the gods of one of 
uh, the, the magistrate. Why the city Dionysia was a city-long festival in Athens, um, had processions and tragedies and plays and all the famous plays, uh, like Euripides and Sophocles and all the famous playwrights, Aristophanes, um, probably their plays originated at the city Dionysia. There's the country Dionysia, which is pretty much the same thing all around Attica, um, but smaller. And then there's also mystery cults. Yay! We don't really know what they have. They did. So his name Dionysus, uh, if you break it out of Dio and Nysa, nice, nice. So Dio uh, is a version of Zeus because the way that uh, the Greek spelled Zeus. Dio just means God. And Nyssa is a, is a some area of Greece that we don't really know where it is. Um, so probably his name is literally just God of Nyssa or Nysa. So that's probably just what his name means. And his basic worship was just getting plastered. Like, they never show, like, the godly hangover or anything. But we have record of people just getting drunk. The main idea was, like, in getting drunk, in, in taking the booze, you're kind of getting possessed by Dionysus. Uh, fig trees and pine trees were also sacred to him because it had to do with fertility. Uh, wet fertility. So Demeter is dry fertility of wheat and barley and that kind of stuff. He's wet fertility, which is more of the male aspect of it because it's like semen and wine. And he's also really of the wild, so he's really connected to pan and satyrs and stuff like that. He's also, because he was born twice, uh, he has, and he's immortal, but also technically was going to be a demigod. Um, he's kind of in this like no man's land like Athena is. So he's very much, you know, male, female kind of thing. He's mortal, but he's also immortal. So he has a posse. Most gods do. Uh, then he has the Bacchae, which are just female worshippers who get drunk all the time. He has the Bucaides, which are kind of the same thing. The Maenads, kind of the same thing. Yeah, just singing, dancing, rebellious women who are out in the woods all the time. Uh, and then he also is depicted with satyrs a lot, so probably he had a connection with satyrs. Um, he's raised by Hermes for a bit, just trying to get out of the, the way of Hera's rage. And yeah, is taught wine in Nyssa again, which is some undisclosed place in the East. He's the god of Symposium. Uh, the Symposium was very much a drinking party of the aristocrats and the middle class. And they talk about human nature in Plato's Symposium, which is a book. It's, pr it's only about six pages long, it's pretty good. They talk about love. And how that all interacts together and all that jazz. It's really good. I would recommend reading it. There's probably a PDF somewhere on the internet. But yeah. There's definitely a sex sexual aspect to the symposium. Which makes sense because Dionysus is uh, very, very, <laughs> very flamingly bisexual. And it's so funny. Drinking cup that we have found that were associated with the symposium uh, had huge eyes. They were apotropaic. And they were used as kind of a mask, which we'll come back to. So you had the the drinking vessels, and then there was also a huge pillar in the pillar, like Pythios of wine, that you would get wine out of and put into that. Uh, and so on those drinking vases, we have huge eyes again. We have scenes of Dionysus and satyrs, and scenes of actual symposium. And also, like, okay, so if you drink to the bottom of the cup, there's the bottom of the cup. People would paint the inside of it, and there were lovers, and um, there's one that we found that is just a dude puking, uh, which is like too much Dionysus kind of thing, which I find really funny, because it's just like, oh, you gotta, you're done with your bottle of wine, here, this is what's gonna happen to you tomorrow. You can't say the Greeks weren't blind. <laughs> so the Anisteria is one of his sacred festivals, which I mentioned. It's a three-day Athenian festival in late February. There's a day that's the jar opening, and that's inviting the dead into the city. And Pythioses were used as just, like, general storage jars. So there's wine in them, there's barley, wheat, all that, but there's also they also use, are used for burying the dead. Yeah, and there's also a wooden statue associated with it to some degree. Day two, you have the wine pitchers, and they're nine pints of wine, so it's like a big boy. The dead are invited into the city again, and it's kind of the inversion of the symposium. There's a drinking game and nobody talks. So you're going from rustle and bustle of ancient Athens and all that to just silence. Which is really, really cool. Again, so another one of the wives of the leading magistrates are is 
sacred married, quote unquote, to Dionysus. Probably to a statue, but we don't really know. And there were masses involved. Third day, uh, they bury a bunch of pots that are filled with grain and honey for the dead. Kind of, please leave. You've tested this over. Go back to the underworld. Uh, and this was also kind of linked with the reproduction of the city. So it was guaranteed reproduction. I mentioned that he was a theater god and then totally just stopped talking about it. So the Linnea, which is another cult slash festival, the city Dionysia, the country Dionysia is what started the kind of Athenian theater and what theater grew to be. All the actors were men, so even though we have the strong female characters in plays like Oedipus and Antigone, they were all played by dudes. There's poetry, tragedy, comedy, and dithymorabs, which are choral poems to Dionysus. Mask costumes again. So that's kind of linked with the party drunk dude as, you know, wine is, you know, you have the mask of a normal human, but when you get drunk, that mask comes off because your inhibitions are being lowered just like in the play. So the city Dionysia was a five-day festival, late March, early April, and it would have a day of comedy and then three days of tragedy and theater plays. Uh, it also included a procession of phalluses, because everything is phallic in the ancient world. <laughs> we also have Dionysian mystery cults, which play a lot into the Bacchae. If you ever read the Bacchae, which I recommend, uh, the characters in the beginning are a mystery cult. So it takes place in Thebes, and all of the women have gone into the woods around Thebes and has started a mystery cult to Dionysus. And the king Pentheus is like, no, this is stupid. I'm going to ban all of you. What are you doing? The mystery cults didn't really have a civic affiliation, so they're less restrictive than the civic Dionysia or the Panathenaic or any other ones that were run by the city. And it required initiation kind of as a you know, losing yourself to others, and probably they were ripped, whipped, or something. We don't really know. Uh, skin, you're a mystery. It kind of annoys me how many mystery cults there were in ancient Greece, because it's like, oh, here's a huge part of our religion. No one knows anything about it. Great. The Dionysiac mystery cults allowed other religions. It was really kind of popular, because you didn't have to be this or that. You could be Dionysian and whatever. So the initiations, again, probably whipping, it's a disorienting, it's by yourself, and then you're coming back at someone else. So it's kind of like an Artemis and Apollo in the same way. There's this idea with Dionysus that he's a divinely inspired madness with alcohol. And so your norms are breaking down, the festivals break the norms in theory, but once the festivals are over, back to business. Drunkenness in public is, push, is breaking norms. Comedy that is in the plays are... You know, you can only punch up in comedy. You know, if you made some joke about slaves or somebody, you know, getting city sacked or something by Athens and then making a joke on that, like, you can't really punch down. And so it was very much a, the lower class kind of punching up the aristocracy before wall, well, before and during democracy being discovered and, and formed. So it's a leavening. Comedy is kind of like a leveling force of class is kind of like booze because you know no matter where you come from in society <laughs> you're gonna get drunk off wine and especially the wine that they drank back in the day because it was stronger and it what you would do is you put water in it and then you would pour the wine in and the alcohol would kill all the bacteria because of that the wine was pretty much everybody drank it because either you get e coli or whatever or you get a little drunk. Dionysus is kind of a god of, of revealing your true self and kind of like again so if you think of getting drunk as a mask if you think of you know wine and that system of worship as a mask then it's not a huge jump to go from that to theater and that into the rest of things he's associated with. And madness to a degree. So, like I said, uh, Dionysus used to be a lot higher on my list of favorite gods. I think he was, if I had to put it, it would probably be like four. And then I read the Bacchae. And that changed my opinion a lot. Especially the last five or six pages. Uh, so, again, he 
comes back to Thebes and is like, okay, I'm going to get revenge on my mom. Because his mom was a Theban princess. And he causes all of the women in Thebes to go crazy. And his cousin Pentheus is the king. And Pentheus is very much like, this is stupid, he's not a god, why are you worshipping him, da 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 da. Eventually Dionysus is able to sneak into the palace, disguised, and convince Pentheus to A, dress and drag, which is hilarious, and B, go out to the, the rites and see what exactly is going on. And Pentheus agrees, and there's this entire segment where Pentheus is like, oh, is my wig okay? Like, is the him where he needs to be? And it's very funny. They go to this, and Pentheus' mom thinks that her son is a lion. And they kill him. They, like, tear him to shreds, uh, which was accurate to the time. And she comes back to Thebes. The mom comes back to Thebes and finds her dad, Cadmus, who's still alive. And is like, oh, I've killed this glorious creature and we need to eat it. And, da -da -da -da. and so she starts eating her son's head. But then Dionysus snaps her out of the stupor or whatever. And she realizes, oh, I just killed my kid. So Pentheus is dead. They bring his body back to the city on like a pyre, like a stretcher kind of thing. And her, his mom is just like so distraught. It, I mean, yeah. And Cadmus, who is both the grandfather and of Pentheus and Dionysus, is like, you can't leave me without an error. You can't do this to me kind of thing. And Dionysus doesn't really seem to care. Like his entire thing is just like, you screwed over my mom all those years ago. I'm going to go off to him does not care and it's just kind of like like you can hear just the sadness and like the oh my god my life is ruined in Cadmus's voice and it doesn't matter to Dionysus and it's just kind of like Pete like oh my god you are a terrible person tearing animals to shreds was a thing in dynastic cults uh, it's called sparagmos and uh or omophigia uh, which was, like, the uncivilized part of it, which is why it was kind of demonized. Which it should be, in this case. There's this idea of enthusiasmus, which is, like, which is where we get the word enthusiasm, and it's the god coming into you. Ecstasis, which is, like, standing outside of yourself, which is, like, losing yourself, and it's your loss of humanity. Which, I mean, yeah, during that, Cynthia's mom kills him, and but it's just... It was so hard to read it and not be really, really mad. Because it's like, dude, this is your family. I get that they did really bad things to you. But that doesn't mean you get to murder them and leave Thebes who didn't do anything wrong without an heir and without a leader. I'm sure there are other people that are like, the black guy is great. And like, I think at one point, I was talking to a friend of mine and he was like, all the Greek gods are terrible people because... And he brought up Dionysus and, like, how he didn't have the right to do that. And I think my argument was just, like, well, it's a respect thing. Like, they didn't respect him, and so he punished them. But after I read that, I was like, okay, yeah, I was partially right that they need to respect you because you were a god. That doesn't mean you get to do that. I would say that's the one that's changed the most over the life. Just since I've been doing classics as, like, a degree instead of just on my own. But this recording is almost 25 minutes long. So this is going to be a good long episode, which I'm liking. OSP, Overly Sarcastic Productions, who I love. Red has a really, really good episode on him throughout the ages, and it's really interesting. So I would recommend watching that if you are in any way interested in that, because they go into a much better version of how he goes from, you know, mystical underworld madness god to drunk party guy that's the frat guy of Olympus. <laughs> As always, we have the Instagram at GreekSpeaks. And as always, if you want me to look at a particular myth in general, put it down in the comments. Have a nice week.